Well, we've had a lot of pretty pessimistic futures for any possibility of whatever we evolve into hundreds of billions of years from now. Uh, the Big Rip, which is possibly unlikely, uh, or the heat death of entropy or everything turning into black holes or proton decay. But I'd like to ask Lawrence one final time, is there any future which doesn't involve the demise of our descendants? Is there any hope for the universe? This is, in fact, a, a, a fun question, and, and I, I've been had a, having an ongoing debate with Freeman Dyson about it. Um, um, the simple answer is maybe. <laughs> because you could be, you know, it, life like us can end, and it will end. I mean, we're going to end life, our, our, unless we escape our, our solar system, it'll end when the sun, you know, uh, encompasses the Earth. But you can imagine, of course, lots of possibilities. And you can imagine life forms that are very different than anything we can see. I mean, even when protons decay, there may be life forms that are made of electrons and positrons that are distant. And Freeman and, is, is very inventive and have come up with those possibilities. But the answer is, ultimately... And, and, um, and my colleague of mine, Glenn Starkman, and I looked at life needs energy to operate. And it turns out, ultimately, it all comes down to the single question, will the universe continue to expand and accelerate forever? If it does, then Freeman and I agree that life must end. Because the amount of energy you have access to is finite in such a universe. Um, and... So ultimately, if the, if the energy of, the em, of empty space remains what it is, life will end. I think there's no debate about that. There's no way you can save it. Even with the most exotic kind of um, black clouds that Fred Hoyle imagined, which are just sort of part, dust particles moving in space that have some consciousness, which is something that Freeman came up with in, 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 at, when we were debating. Uh, but if that isn't the case, you might imagine, it's possible to imagine, something like a black cloud, which actually could persist in principle, forever, in an eternally expanding universe. Um, whether we, it's still an open question whether that black cloud could have thought processes, and we don't have time to go through it. These things I've actually thought about. Uh, How does it get its energy to do anything? Well, it, it, it basically, it's, it, it, the motion, the classical motion of the particles in the cloud is enough to encompass uh, thoughts, if you wish. And they redshift away, but they never go quite to zero. And it, it's... It, it, you can imagine, it turns out the phase, this is a little technical, but the phase space, the classical phase space, allows an infinite amount of information to be processed. The question, really when you're talking about life, you're talking about information processing. And the question and the debate that Freeman and I have had is, can you imagine processing an infinite amount of information? Because that means you're living forever. Okay? And the answer is, probably not. In fact, I've shot down almost every example he has. If there's an energy of empty space, the answer is precisely, absolutely not. If there isn't, then the question is still not resolved. I would bet against it. That's the bad news. But the good news is that uh, there's a little bit of good news here. Life will end in our universe. And it, and, but if the universe is eternal and expanding forever, there can be quantum fluctuations locally. And eventually, those fluctuations can produce potentially a very dense object or a series of objects, maybe even galaxies, that will produce life in the future. So even though no life itself can persist forever, life may die out in the universe, but in the future it may be reborn again. We don't know. Now, the one infinite universe you were talking about was the idea of this eternal inflation, where you have inflation continuing and producing nucleating big bangs all over the place. In that situation, presumably, while our own bit of the flat space is uh, going to decay, there could be other ones. Oh, absolutely. In the picture of internal inflation, I thought you were talking about our universe. I again use the word universe to mean everything we can have contact with. In internal inflation, there's great hope because eternally there'll be universes that are being born. They'll be causally disconnected. They won't know about us or anything or ever know that we existed. But you can, you can be happy to know that then in the future there'll be other universes. In fact, it brings up true philosophical, philosophical problems because in such a situation where there are potentially an infinite number of universes, this conversation that we're having will happen an infinite number of times in exactly the same way and slightly different ways. In a different universe, I could be asking you the questions. Um, and this idea of infin infinities produce real problems. And so um, it's something that some theorists are now thinking about is, uh, is how can you handle those kind of infinities if there are an infinite number of universes? Because literally, if, if, even if our universe, actually, if our universe is eternal, 
even in a single universe, you can imagine everything will happen the same way in slightly different ways an infinite number of times. It won't be as if it'll be us. It'll be recreations of us that are either approximations or essentially identical. But in, a, in, an, infin in an inflationary universe, that's certainly happening. And, um, and so uh, there's always hope that if we screw it up in our universe, that some other civilization in another universe won't. Thank you very much. Thank you. I live in hope.